Good afternoon. My name is Greg Shove. I'm your co-host for the second session and your first speaker. I want to talk to you today about fresh web, the end of command and control. We think we live in this world, so we have been managing our brands this way, with a tremendous amount of precision, like NASA manages a space shuttle launch. But in fact, we now live in this world. It's a map of the internet done by a guy called, uh, at the Opti Project. It's about five years old, actually. It's out of date. But as you, can, as you can see, some bright stars, but increasingly a lot of little stars in terms of, sort of the internet infrastructure and how information is kind of flowing across the web. We were just getting used to blogs, even blogs at runway shows. Now it's getting worse, meaning the flood of information coming across that network is accelerating. I do think Twitter really matters. I won't bore you with Facebook stats about how it's bigger than Argentina. Um, what's happening is a flood of opinion, advice, and intention. A lot of it is digital exhaust. We don't, you don't need to know as a marketer that I broke up with my girlfriend last night. That's digital exhaust, right? But there is a lot of other stuff worth listening to. It's a media world in which creating content is now as easy as consuming it. We've never been in this kind of world before. And it's a marketing world in which your message is being remixed and redistributed every day out of your control. So when you, you have been used to this, I think, typically as a marketing approach. You are at the center, command and control, using channels to push your message out to groups of people, your best customers, out to your prospects. I would argue that we now need to think about our lives this way. We are now at the center, us as individuals. Not just at the center, but now living in these networks, in many different networks at the same time. This is us now. And as a marketer, I think you need to think of yourself as a participant, earning attention not pushing your message. And I would argue that your organizational structure that probably looks something like this needs to now look something like this, where you've taken that small, isolated digital team and really spread digital competency right through the organization across all your channels. But wait, it's going to get even worse. Tumblr, 50 million monthly visitors last month in a single month, talking about Coach last night when I pulled this screenshot. And wait a minute, I pride myself on knowing about this stuff. I like to know what's sort of coming next. I hadn't heard about this company until a month ago. It has five million users. It's less than a year old, and it's growing at 35% a month, daily booth. And here's someone uploading a photograph of their uh, recently purchased Gucci products. This is really beginning to accelerate in terms of the fragmentation and spreading of uh, consumer uh, publishing, if you will. Why is this so difficult? Because we haven't had this before. Direct mail became email, and billboards became banners. But we haven't had a precedent for the fresh web, for the social web. All right, what do we do? First step is we listen. And we listen to those that are the most influential the most followers, connectors, and friends. The second thing we, sorry, uh, and when we do that, we learn interesting things. Vov Clico search result on Google, not that interesting anymore, right? Vov Clico search result on Twitter gets pretty fascinating very quickly. Where, what, what's the price of it, where it's for sale, what people think about it, what they're doing when they drink it, what they should be doing when they're drinking it. A lot of stuff about your brand you'll now, you'll now find on Twitter. Step two, leverage. Leverage means get in and participate, and I think in this way. Here are my recommendations. Be authentic, realize it's two-way, deal with what comes back. Don't dabble. You need to go the distance with this stuff. Don't come in for 90 days or six months and then get back out again. I think you really have to commit. And I apologize on behalf of all of our speakers, because I think we've done one of two things. We've only been able to find the same examples, because these are the only luxury brands that are innovating, or we haven't looked hard enough. And if I get invited back next year to speak, I'll try to find different examples. I know already uh, speakers have referenced Tiffany, but it is a good example, because they're not dabbling with 200,000 followers on Facebook. They are, I think, now building an audience at a fraction of the cost that it would have cost to build an audience outside of Facebook. So 
I think they're doing the right thing. Step three, build applications. I believe now what the fresh web allows is you to build things on top of it that are useful to consumers, that educates them, inspires them, entertains them. Henry mentioned this uh, this morning in terms of what we can do with consumers. And I think the fresh web enables that. For example, I think this is an interesting, cute application from Volkswagen. You put, if you are a Twitterer, if you have a Twitter account, you can put in your Twitter name. It will wait a few seconds. It will analyze what you've been tweeting about and come back and recommend what model car you should be driving from Volkswagen. I got the Beetle. I'm not sure what that says about uh, me. but Or this one, uh, which is, Halogen built this recently. Sucking in all the Twitter real-time comments about fashion and fashion brands and helping consumers sort, filter, and know and see what brands are sort of trending up or trending down. So building applications on top. Step four, rinse and repeat. Do it all again. Don't punish failure. Go quickly and establish performance metrics, which is probably the hardest thing to do, I would admit. This stuff is easy to talk about. It is harder to measure. But step four is to repeat. Remember, this is a point that Peter made, Peter Haran, earlier this morning. I think he, we had to move over too quickly. Don't spend all your energy trying to bring people back home. And I would argue that if 80% of your design, development, and technology budget is building a homepage or sort of dot .com, that's too much. Bring that down to 50 and deploy that investment elsewhere, meaning elsewhere on the network, where people are, not where you want them to be. So go where they are, into their homes and into their networks. And of course, it's luxury. Design, style, visual still matter, even in a fresh, social, fragmented web. Look and feel is still important. Are you ready? How do you self-assess? Culture, internally, do you have the culture that will tolerate failure? Secondly, is your team ready? Do they get this stuff? And most importantly, do they have any clout or budget inside of your organization? I think often not when it comes to digital teams. Do your technology vendors build, thing, build things in four weeks or not, or not four months? This is a very fast, iterative environment now. And finally, your media partners, are they selling you media or distributed engagement? Gina showed this morning a distributed engagement application. And that's what I think you should, you should expect of your media partners. Chaos or opportunity? Depends on, I think, your outlook on life. Uh, let me tell you a personal story, why I think it's opportunity uh, for all of us. Two years ago, uh, reading Seth Godin's blog, you might know him, market, kind of marketing uh, guru guy, and at the time I was probably wearing a Keton jacket, which is the jackets I normally wear. My wife thinks that I look pretty decent in them, so I've stuck with that label for about 10 years. From Seth's blog, I hopped to Hugh McLeod's Internet Cartoon Cards blog called Gaping Void, which I check in at least once a week. And from Hugh's blog, I learn about Thomas Mahone, a Savile Row tailor that maintains a great intimate insight and sort of look inside of what's it like to be a Savile Row tailor called English Cut. And from that blog, on Wednesday, I picked up my jacket, which I'm wearing. Hopefully you think, thank you. Uh, English, so they cut a little, uh, you know, a little uh, close to the body. They actually shorten the sleeves. They like to show the French cuff a little bit more than the Italians. But um, this is the world in which we now live, fresh, distributed, fragmented. As a brand, I believe you are now conductors. And you, your musicians and your audience are now part of your performance. And I really would encourage you to think about yourselves, particularly CMOs, in that way. All right, thank you.